Lord, once again, thank you once more, one more time for tuning in to living in his image on purpose. You know that you can't just live in his image by accident. It's got to be on purpose. It's, it's got to be intentional. You know what? There's something that I've been um, been thinking about, and, and I feel like we underrate and we underestimate the power of encouragement. Um, encouragement is so very powerful and so very vital. <clears throat> I believe that there's so many people that that literally get off of a telephone conversation and they're severely discouraged. I believe sometimes that people that are looking at the news and they're severely discouraged. I believe sometimes it can be a parent that's dealing with their own child and they become severely discouraged. And, and you know what? And I want to always also encourage that because I don't always want to make it look like it's the. It's the children or it's the parent. But I need to know that that even there's some children right now. And I need you to know your parent needs encouragement. Don't assume that just because your parent is always the one uh, calling the shots that that they don't use or they don't need some encouragement from you as a son. Believe it or not, that's a sign of maturity. Think about it. How many children do you have that actually spend time encouraging you? When you when a child can begin to encourage, man, that's such a sign of maturity because that says that that child is literally taking the time and saying, you know what? I understand that my mom or my dad, you know, I want to let you know I appreciate you. Be encouraged. Everything that you're doing, it is not in vain. You got to you got to really understand that encouragement is like going back, tending the seed that you know that was planted. It's like being able to go back and say, I know I planted the right seed. It's like being able to go back and say, you know what? I understand the, the scripture says some plant, others water, but God brings the increase. Are you encouraging? Are you still knowing and believing that you planted good seed into good soil? Praise the Lord. I, I, when I dealt with this scripture in, in this particular title, I dealt with encouragement, the confidence builder. We're going to make this encouragement, the confidence builder part two. Because I believe that there's so many points that 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 are so vital. We really need to receive encouragement. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, as we get ready to go on into this, why don't you begin to just take a moment and say, Lord, help me to receive encouragement. Help me to receive encouragement right now. Praise the Lord. Because you know what? We already dealt with several aspects of encouragement. The first one was ordained encouragement. Ordained encouragement. What does that mean? That means that there's certain things that the Lord himself spoke before the foundation of the world. Us walking in dominion, us claiming territory. This is ordained encouragement, meaning God himself has set it in motion. And we don't want to be like clay and try to go against the hand of the potter. No, he created us for this purpose. So I'm called of God. I am the righteousness of God. So so this is ordained encouragement. But then after ordained encouragement, we dealt with commanded encouragement. Oh, my goodness. This is man. This is a really powerful one, because this type of encouragement deals with the fact that God actually spoke to Moses. Praise the Lord. And told Moses that this is the season. This is the season. I need you to command Joshua. Command Joshua to be encouraged. I'm commanding you to encourage Joshua. You know what? Because Joshua is going to be elevated inside of the people. Who is it that's right under you? Who is it that's very close to you? And God is saying, you know what? Encouragement is not negotiable anymore. Encouragement is not something that, we, you know, maybe I could do it. Maybe not. Nah. This is commanded encouragement. I need you to speak life to this person because you understand what's been set in front of that person. Commanded encouragement. Command. So listen, so listen up. We got we got we got ordained encouragement. Then we have commanded encouragement. But now where I want to pick up today is self encouragement. Oh, my God. Self encouragement. The scripture says in first Samuel 30 and six that. That David was greatly distressed. David was broke down because the scripture says that when he came back from war, he found out that their wives, their children were all taken. And the scripture says that the people was talking about stoning David. 
And I love the fact that even in the midst of that discouragement, even in the midst of, isn't that amazing? That's why, especially we as husbands, we got to be very careful because all of us operate in some capacity to be just like a David because we always going out. We're the hunters. We got to go out. We're trying to provide so that we can expand territory. We're trying to provide so we can increase in comfortability for our wives and for our families. But guess what? As a husband, I don't know another position that is of utmost most important is that as a man of God, you got to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. The scripture says that David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. You know why he says the Lord, his God? Because it signifies that God was his authority. I need you to understand every one of you who are listening and watching right now, you're encouraging yourself also. Every one of us are already encouraging ourselves. But guess what? The only difference is what are you encouraging yourself with? Who are you encouraging yourself with? If you're a man and, and if you don't have a strong relationship with the Lord, guess what? If a relationship with a woman goes bad, guess what you're going to do? You're going to find another woman to encourage yourself with. Guess what? If you're a woman and, and if all of a sudden things are not going right with you, guess what? You can find yourself spending money, just, just splurging on money, not realizing that you're trying to encourage yourself. Guess what? If, if you're a child and if you're upset with what the teacher said, you can encourage yourself by getting into pornography. Come on now, what kind of, well, what are you encouraging yourself? Is some people encouraging themselves in marijuana? Some people encouraging themselves in drinking. Some people encouraging themselves in so many different things. But I love the fact, man, this is some powerful scripture right here, man. The word says that David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. I'm under the authority of God. Father, what is it that you would have me to do? I'm encouraging myself. Wait a minute. The scripture says I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my encouragement. Praise the Lord. Be encouraged today. Guess what? It's so good, man, I, and I'm not going to lie to you. It is so good to have. You know, I, I, I've never played football as a sport where I had, a, had the cheerleaders on the side. You know, I have cheerleaders that I actually have relationship with the, with the football player. Guess what? I wasn't, I wasn't that good. I didn't have enough encouragement to get. I felt like, you know what, I, side note, I really felt like I was that good. I just didn't have enough encouragement to get out there. But you know what? Just in case you don't have a cheerleader that's trying to root you on. What happened if the cheerleader gets sick? What happened if you got the one on the side who's supposed to be encouraging you? What happens if they're not around? I know you love your mom. You better not take that encouragement that comes from your mom for granted. Because guess what? I believe that encouragement is, is given as, as, as substance to make sure you keep going and you don't quit. You can't quit where you're at right now. Get back up. Go back out there. The scripture says that there was a man of God by the name of Elisha. And Elisha was able to talk to Joash, who was a king at the time. And the scripture says that Joash was trying to get counsel from Elisha. And Elisha said, take the arrows and shoot them out the window for the Lord's deliverance. And, and Elisha took the arrows and, and, and Joash took the arrows and he shot them out. He said, it's for the Lord's deliverance. And he said, now take the arrows and beat them on the ground. And the scripture says that Joash took the arrows and hit the arrows three times. And guess what? The man of God got angry with him. He said, who told you only to do it three times? That's sometimes that's what our problem is. Sometimes we do what we're supposed to do, but are you doing it enough? You act like only encouraging your children three times is enough. I don't care how long have they been living with you. If you only thinking about three times, the Lord says, man, if you would have just kept doing it, if you would have gave them a little bit more encouragement, God says, I would have given you complete victory. Why is it that we have to wait till we have problems? Why is it? Don't you ever assume that that encouragement is not needed because you're just operating based off what it looks like in the natural. The devil is a liar. Come on now. We, we got to open up our eyes. We got to open up our eyes. We got to understand that God is truly using us to encourage. Praise the Lord. 
And the Lord, the word says that David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Man, this, this self-encouragement is very, very important. Let's go to another scripture real quick. <clears throat> self-encouragement. Let's go to the book of uh, Judges, if you would. Judges 20. And let's go to verse number 21. Because you got to be able to encourage yourself. Come on, just be able to say right now, begin to say, I, I choose to encourage myself right now. Man, it's, I'm telling you, it's so good to know that encouragement is ordained by God. Man, that's awesome. But we all go through times where it's like, man, why is it, Lord, why I don't feel like I know your word right now? I, I hear your word. I, I know your word, but my actions are demonstrating as if I don't know your word, as if I don't believe it at this moment. Lord, I, I, need, I need to know this and I need to believe it. Then there's times where it's commanded encouragement. You know, don't you ever take for granted when someone comes to encourage you. You better believe. I mean, the other day, man, I got up and saw on my phone that I had a, 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 a text message from a brother I hadn't talked to in over a year. And he just sent me like a little write up, just just encouragement. And and I called him. And he said, man, I was in prayer this morning and the Lord just put you on my heart. See, when, when you get encouraged, you got to understand when you don't have no tangible, physical reason to interact with somebody and they can all of a sudden bring encouragement to you, that means it's been commanded at that time. You got to receive it. Praise the Lord. You got to have self-encouragement. When that encouragement is not coming, it doesn't mean what well, nobody encouraged me. I'm going to just drop the ball. No. Learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, watch. This is a powerful scripture. Judges 20. And look at verse number 21, Judges 20 and verse 21. Oh, my goodness. It says, and the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day. Twenty two thousand men. Listen to this. That we're talking about a war. Twenty two thousand died that one day. Verse number 22. And the people, the men of Israel encouraged themselves hallelujah and they set their battle again in array meaning after 22,000 died you know how it is most of the time we say if that many died you know that's a battle I ain't supposed to fight but guess what if you talking about you sent by God scripture says he put sometimes you got to feel like you put yourself back in position even after it looked like you just experienced one of the worst losses you know, it's almost like somebody that been divorced and you can't stand how bad it was. And they got many of you talking about you ain't even going to get married no more because of how bad it was. God says, wait a minute. If I tell you to get back into position, if I tell you I want to restore you, who are you to go against God? See, this is why you got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. They encourage themselves. They put themselves in battle array. They put themselves back in position. Well, they did the first day, and I like this, man. This is so powerful. They put the, they encouraged themselves. They said, come on, we got to get in position. But I love this because verse number 23 let us know that just because they put themselves in position, they said, I'm in position, but does that mean I have to fight? <laughs> you could put yourself in position and still not feel like you're ready to fight. They, they put themselves in position. You think, wait a minute, this is a battleground. You on the other side, don't you realize they got some people that put themselves in battle position and they still not even ready to fight? Look at what it says right here in verse 23. And the children of Israel went up and they wept. They cried until the evening time. Just imagine that some of you right now, you put yourself back in position. You go back home to that marriage. You go back to that job. And why you there? People don't even realize you're like looking around. What you looking for? I'm looking for some napkins. I'm looking for some tissue. Because just for me to be here, I'm crying right now. Just for me to be here, I feel like I might lose my mind. Just for me to be here, I feel like I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether or not this going to be my last day or not. You weeping before the Lord. And look what it says. They wept for hours. And after they finished weeping, say, okay. After I finished weeping, now, Lord, do you want me to fight again? Oh, my. You could be at home and not even fighting. You can have children not even fighting for them. You could be saying, yeah, they got food in the refrigerator, but are you fighting? 
I remember years ago I was going through, my wife and I was going through some serious conflict in our marriage. And I can remember talking to my godmother, and I remember my godmother said, son, are you praying for your wife? I still remember. She said, son, are you praying for your wife? I said, yeah, ma, I pray all the time. This was years ago. This had to be at least maybe about 10 years, 12 years ago. I said, yeah, ma, I'm praying for her. She said, son, I'm asking, are you really praying for your wife? And it was almost as if when she asked me that, it's like it shook something on the inside of me. I said, pray for what? I said, if it looked like the marriage is going down, I don't want to feel like I'm praying just to try to make her want to be in a relationship. I still remember this. I'm on the battlefield. I'm in position, but I'm not fighting anymore. And all of a sudden, my godmother, I know this was God, because my godmother said, who told you you need permission from your wife to do what God ordained you to do? God ordained you to pray for your wife. Don't you realize that? I don't care what it is that's happening in your wife's life. God would allow you to take authority and that very enemy that's attacking your wife. She said you could take that devil by the throat. You don't need permission. That's what I need you to understand. So many times you on that field and you not even fighting. You not even fight. See, this is what happens. You can be in position, but now you got to be in a position where you say, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to go into this battle? What, how do you want me to exercise my authority right now? Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. Self-encouragement. Are you truly encouraging yourself to continue on in this battle? Praise the Lord. The Bible says they ask, shall I go up against the children of Benjamin? Look what it says. Verse 23. My brother, my whole family. Jesus said, think not that I've come to send peace on earth. You know what? I understand so many people talking about, you know, we against war and ain't, you know, and you not for God if you for war. Guess let me tell you a scripture that you may not know. Of. Trust me, if you look for it, it's in the Bible. Jesus said, think not that I've come to send peace on this earth. But to, to bring war, to set at variance Fathers against sons, mothers against daughters. He said, a man's enemy shall be their, them of their own household. What is he talking about? Are you saying that you're trying to cause discord in my house? No. What he's saying is when you take a stance for the Lord, that means even if your family choose to come against you, God says you got to have more love for me than you have for your family. Husbands, you got to love God more than you love your wife. Wives, you got to love God more than you love your husband. I don't care how much it is that you're going through. Israel says, shall I go against my own brother? brother? And the Lord said, go against him. If they challenge in the word of the Lord in your house, go against them. God says, I want to give you victory because you may be looking at it like I don't want to lose relationship. God says, I'm trying to gain salvation in their lives. Sometimes you got to be willing to lose people to get them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Encourage yourself. Praise the Lord. I know you in position, but are you fighting from that position? Oh, my God, I think. Oh, my God, thank you so much for them words of encouragement. Lord, you ordained encouragement for me. Praise the Lord. You commanded encouragement for me. I, I don't have no choice. I got to encourage myself in the Lord. And you know what, Father? Thank you when people can encourage me. Praise the Lord. I don't take it for granted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is some powerful self-encouragement. But you know what? I would be remiss if I talk to you about ordained encouragement, commanded encouragement, self-encouragement, and I leave without warning you about evil encouragement. Guess what, y'all? All encouragement is not always good. Sometimes encouragement can be very evil. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's see what we're talking about here. Let's go to the book of Psalms real quick. Book of Psalms. Man, this is, I'm so glad the Lord put this in my spirit to come back to this encouragement. Praise the Lord. Psalm 64 Praise the Lord. Are you encouraging yourself? Are you encouraging your children? Are you spending enough time encouraging people around you? Because you got to understand when you when you're not on your job, the enemy is always on his job. You better you better understand this. Praise the Lord. Look what it says. 
I want to warn you right now about evil encouragement, because sometimes we don't realize encouragement. That word encouragement sounds good. Like and like like welcome all encouragement. You can't welcome all encouragement. Somebody encouraging you to cheat on your spouse. Somebody encouraging you to have another drink after you said you wasn't going to drink anymore. Somebody encouraging you to go back to that strip club. You better believe all encouragement is not going to be. Man, let me stop. Talking. Let me just show you what the scripture is saying. Psalm 64. And look what it says in verse number five. Psalm 64, five. And they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? They talking about setting traps, man, let, let's get her. They encouraging you to partake in something evil. And guess what? That's encouragement also. That's why you got to know how. That's why, man, I'm going back to that scripture. And and first uh, Samuel 30 and six, David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Are you encouraging yourself in evil counsel? You got to learn how to cut some ties. You got to learn how to say there's some some umbilical cord. You know, umbilical cord is what is connected to a child when a child comes from their mother to show that that's how the child received the necessary nutrients to, to enable and to sustain life for that child. You got to understand when you're trying to be born again, there is like an umbilical cord that's still connected to the world and you got to dismantle it. You got to cut it off. You can't allow yourself to still be fed by the things that that is evil and corrupt. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. Praise the Lord. They commune laying traps privately. You think nobody don't see what you're doing. I want you to know the Bible says the scripture says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the whole earth. Seeking who is it that he can reveal himself through. You think it's a private matter. It's really not private. That's why you got to know that the Lord is with you. And everything you're doing, you got to know that the Lord is a very present help in the time of trouble. You got to know that the scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord says, I'm going to deliver you out of every one of them. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord because there's so much evil encouragement taking place in the world. Watch this. That was Psalm 64 and 5. Let's go to another one real quick. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 41. Oh, my God, I hope this is helping somebody. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41 and verse number seven. Praise the Lord. Watch this, y'all. Isaiah 41 and seven. Look what the scripture says. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. <laughs> like, like, listen to this, like an assembly line. The carpenter encouraged the the goldsmith, he that smootheth with the hammer, encouraged the one who smites the anvil. The anvil is that thing y'all ever saw the um, the Marine commercial where they talk about how they're looking for a few good men and they show how they sticking that metal inside the flame and it turns orange and they start beating it with a hammer on this thing that looks like it's like 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 a bull horn and like it has two horns on the side. That's called an anvil. An anvil, meaning when you put something in the fire and you start making something, you need something that can handle that heat. And then you take the hammer to begin to shape it. He says right here that the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. The goldsmith encouraged him that smoothed it with the hammer. The hammer encouraged the one that smites on the anvil saying it's ready for soldering. And he fastened it with nails so that it cannot be moved. He's literally talking about idolatry. He's talking about how they would fix idols to make sure it can't move. Sometimes you're wondering why is it I got these bad habits and they can't go anywhere because it was like an assembly line to put it in your life. These things have been put together with careful precision. So it's going to take some serious love and devotion to God. God has designed us in such a way that this can never be no one man show. 
That's why Jesus said, if any one of you touch and agree with another one, if any two or three of you touch and agree, you got to understand God designed us. We need help. Come on, won't you just say that? Say, I need some help. Guess what? We got to encourage ourselves to stay on this journey. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, because I need you to know that there is a thing called evil encouragement. Be warned right now. Remember, we have ordained encouragement. We have commanded encouragement. We have self encouragement. But then we got to be warned of evil encouragement. Let me show you this last one, y'all. This is where we closing out at. Let's go to first Thessalonians. Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. You can't get into the word of God with a with a pure heart and it not change your whole mindset. Praise the Lord, because I got some stuff I could be discouraged about right now. But to allow this word to come through me, I, I can't stay. You can't you can't put something in fire and take it out the same way it was. Fire is going to change it. If you take I take this piece of plastic and put it in fire, if the fire is so hot, the water will dissolve to vapors and the, the plastic will just melt. But just in case you didn't know, the scripture says the Lord our God is a consuming fire. He says, my arms are outstretched to you. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Let me give you rest. I need you to know that encouragement is the number one confidence builder. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians 5 and 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. I want to read it to you in this different translation that I have. It says, we exhort you, brothers, admonish the disorderly, encourage the faint hearted, support the weak, be patient toward all. If you see somebody, praise the Lord, who look like they're getting out of order, God says gently, try to put them back in order. But when you see somebody who's weak, he says, encourage them, encourage them. How many times? Once, twice. And the scripture says that there was this king by the name of Joash and he went to the prophet Elisha. The scripture says that Elisha told him to take the arrows for the Lord, the Lord's deliverance. And he said, shoot them out the window. And he did it. Then the scripture says that Elisha told Joash, he said, take the arrows and beat them on the ground. And the scripture says that he did it three times. The scripture says that the prophet of the Lord got angry and said, you only did it three times. He said, if you would have kept on beating them on the ground, he said, the Lord would have gave you complete victory. I need you to understand if you've been encouraging your wife, you've been encouraging your husband only a few times. Don't stop with a few. Let God give you complete victory. The Lord doesn't anoint a finished work. He anoints so that you can finish the work. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged. Receive this confidence builder. Amen. Amen.